I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. Got a player requested video on the Ragnar and uh, one of my favorite destroyers. And you're going to take a look at it right now. Engaging a destroyer right off the bat because the name of the game is bullying the other DDs and baby destroyers because that is what the Ragnar excels at. It's basically the bigger brother of the small one minus the torpedoes and really the concealment because this thing literally is just a rooster with a destroyer hull and the big caliber guns with elbing accuracy and literally just melts away destroyers just like that. As you can see, the Daring is not having a good day. So how do we uh, become successful at Ragnar? Well, you can see the, what we're really just doing right here is since you got nothing else other than guns, you're going to focus primarily on that skill. And quite honestly, that really excels at it. And uh, really what the engine boost does, and if you build for it, you can see I've got a pretty long duration speed boost, which allows you to do one and only one good thing, is either one, get out of dodge, or two, stick around, and kind of do the shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake, and just really dodge shells back and forth, left and right. And it really, really does a good job, especially with the range, if you want to build for it. You can do these long, long range caliber guns, kind of Wooster style guns, or you can kind of build a shorter range, which still gets out to 13 kilometers max, and you can just really just sit back, melt battleships and cruisers and then bully dds and a cap so really it, it, it it's kind of a boring gameplay if you want to think about it if you're not really into this kind of slow methodical just fire and burning and fire and burning and over and over again and then when you need to bully a destroyer here and there um this pretty much is the gameplay but it does it so well and it's very very powerful in that regard because i think in this in this category and again there's different categories of destroyer player um, I preferably like this one because I'm, I feel like I have a little bit more battle impact where I'm literally bullying everybody on the map, including battleships. And that really annoys them. Think about it. Look, you have an Ohio running away. I mean, you would think an Ohio would go in, brawl, use its survivability to go in and maybe dominate an area during an area of denial, but it looks like we're doing the area of denial because that's kind of the state of World of Warships today. It's really sitting in the back and camping. Uh, a lot of the descriptions about Ragnar is mostly it's not really a cap contester in a sense, but really more of a supporting role and maybe in the second line behind the first line of destroyers like a Shimakaze or a Gearing that goes out there and really spots for you. And then, of course, the Ragnar brings the cali big caliber guns, kind of that bigger brother mentality of just supporting that initial onslaught role. And, and that's pretty much it. It does a terrible job at hunting destroyer. I mean, sorry, submarines, as you can see later on. It's got this front loading tube. It's just odd. But here's where the bread and butter really shines right here. A destroyer caught in smoke. And really, you're just using that radar to get him out of there and get him revealed. And boom, the two caliber guns is really melt destroyer right there. Boom, he goes down. You're starting off with 30,000 HP points right there. And it's really just a lot of HP for a small destroyer to deal with. And that gives you that ability to you know bully and then you got the heels that gives you that uh the also benefit uh, i would say additional benefit of uh, reg uh forgiving mistakes and we dodged torpedoes right there now i'll be honest right there that was a lucky one because ragnar is sluggish if you ever played the harigumo or maybe another bigger larger historic type gameplay it is very very difficult to steer and very sluggish very big i mean it's a large destroyer just look at the size of it right now and, and it's just a large hole and it's easy to hit it's difficult to maneuver around to torpedoes like we said moving around objects and it's slow it's slow and methodical it's kind of that just big just ginormous you know destroyer shine if you want to call it that and you know so to speak but it's just really that easy, slow gameplay. You can see right there, we're taking a lot of damage because it's so easy to, darn to hit. So uh, as we're building this uh, battleship, I'll read a couple snippets about it. It's available in the, the armor for steel. Uh, do I recommend it? Absolutely. It's my personal favorite for me. But if you don't want to spend your steel on that, that's okay. But Ragnar enters the armory normally as a replacement for Smallin. Like I said, bigger brother to Smallin. While she does not incorporate some elements of Smallin's gameplay style, she's more akin to Elbing with that accuracy and Friesen with only two guns um, to play with at tier 10 level. Ragnar has an array of tools that make her a super superb destroyer hunter. For starters, Ragnar is a better armored than most destroyers. Her hull is made up of a 25 millimeter of uh, plate between the barbettes, which gives her the ability... 
uh, to shatter most high explosive rounds, 149 millimeters and below. Destroyer captains will find themselves that in a gun gunfight with an opposing Ragnar are likely to be a bit taken aback by her ability to shrug off incoming damage from her, her main battery guns as a result of this quirk of construction. Further enhancing her survivability is a 30,000 HP pool, which I talked to you about. Kind of like, you know, some tier 10 light cruisers and her access to repair party consumable. Rounding things out, Ragnar's surveillance radar, 7.5 kilometer range, is equivalent to her lowest achievable service detection. So basically, when you get spotted, you pop it right away and just reveal. So that's kind of the gameplay style. Boom, you, you if you want to rush a cap, you get spotted right off the top, boom, pop that uh, radar and you start unloading on whatever's in front of you. Uh, to punish destroyers that she spots, Ragnar mounts light cruiser guns on a destroyer hull. Similar to the German destroyer Elbing, Ragnar is equipped with 152mm guns that reload every 3.4 seconds. While at a straight damage per minute comparison seems to leave Ragnar at the back of the pack, the reality is that she outperforms what the raw numbers might suggest. Her ability to bully opposing destroyers with her rate of fire and health pull is unique to World of Warships. When not picking on opposing destroyers, Ragnar can sit at longer ranges and use her HE to light fires on enemy cruisers and battleships with 11% chance of fire per shell in the best tier among tier 10 destroyers. In summary, Ragnar marries her all gun destroyer play style of Friesland health to health pull Elbing and adds a small ends radar. She's a highly specialized ship, exceptionally good at bullying most opposing destroyers and capable of harassing enemy cruisers, as you're seeing in the background and battleships. Played well, she is a nightmare for opposing destroyer captains to deal with, lacking assets to smote and with her poor handling. However, she can focus, be or sorry, be focused off the board by a coordinated enemy fire if you, she finds herself in a bad situation. So yes, that is, like I said, the downside of the Ragnar is that, you know, with anything, if you're going to get focused down, uh, it is very, very, uh, I would say, difficult to get out of that situation because you're a big destroyer. You're getting focused on to start up and stop on this thing. It's, I mean, you can start and stop and juke if you want, but you're taking a very, very big risk. And the way the World of Warships players today, they are very, very good aimers, I've noticed. Like, you know, you got battleships and cruisers firing at like 15, 18 kilometers away from unsuspecting directions and they really can hit you pretty hard this is all toro is shooting at us right now notice that he is still boom look getting some shots and that's taking 3600 damage off the bat so uh, although i like that you know shake and bake juke and mook a like, kind of style of a uh, destroyer gameplay like i'm trying to dodge shells like it's my life that depends on it which it does uh it is somewhat difficult to do it in ragnar uh, even with the engine boost sometimes because of the nature of people's aiming and their people are getting used to and they're watching videos like this of figuring out well how do destroyer players play how do they dodge shells and let's see if i can anticipate where they are going uh, for me right here you can see what i'm doing i'm using the, the engine boost now that i've run out i should technically stop at this point because i'm i don't have the ability to stop start on a dime anymore now i'm kind of that sluggish slow rolling kind of use that haragumo style destroyer roll that you know most of us are accustomed to and boom there he goes down colombo goes down or sorry colombo takes alatoro down and this is pretty much the gameplay that the Ragnar and other uh, kind of gunboat DDs do is you're just trying to get people to fire at you and reveal their broadsides and just make mistakes. So you can see right there, a lot of the battleships really like to shoot at destroyers, uh, especially like me. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a juicy target out there. But they really do like the picking on you because you're just that easy target to look at and fire and you're small and don't have much health. But just like here, you see a, a Jaeger and you really just want to shoot at it. It just looks so beautiful. It's defenseless at this point. It's revealed by radar and it's just fun to shoot at. I don't know. It's something about it. And you know you can get this kind of quick, easy kill and that's why destroyer players suffer so much these days in World of Warships. And do we get them? boom splash you there he goes down so yeah like i said it is difficult but not impossible but i would say you just got to save that engine boost if you want to be a successful ragnar player save that engine boost when you're ready to shoot shoot and then pop it and then start going back and forth and then if you got to get out of dodge with it it's speed again the engine boost lasts like i said one minute 18 if you build for it but prep normally it's a minute and that's all the time you have really to play right here black is looking he's looking for a target he's probably going to shoot at me right because i'm the lowest health guy out here and he's going, yep, let me shoot the Ragnar because it's fun and it's probably Ripper DD, whatever, and let's get a Ripper DD kill. But unfortunately, he is melting to these guns, and that's why I like Ragnar so much. Good angles as well, as so you can know, I'm nosed in. Very good angles to deflect those AP shells. But like that said, you're really just there to distract a lot of players. You get them shooting, and you're firing from distance. That's the name of the game of the Ragnar. It can bully the destroyers. Yes, I do still like that role. I like just bullying destroyers. It's fun. You can see right here, here's the situation of the uh, submarine gameplay. It is not fun at all. You're not dropping that many depth charges. I mean, Daring alone dropped 16 depth charges on one run, so... Yeah, I, I don't like Ragnar for that ability, so I would not rush a cap or rush a, a submarine. It just doesn't work, but you can go out there and spot. 
You can get out there, somebody gets people to shoot at you, reveal their position, and that's what the Ragnar really does. It's got the, a lot of HP pool just to be able to deal the, that damage, deal or absorb damage as well, get people to fire at you, use the engine boost to juke back and forth long enough for your enemy, your friendly team to shoot at the enemy ships, and you hopefully that may work. Uh, here I'm just playing around, I'm just shooting at the, obviously I know I can't hit the guy with the X next to his submarine symbol. It's just not going to be, it's just pointless, but I'm just seeing if he would surface or just have fun. I'm launching, look at one, two, three, four. Wow, four depth charges, that's terrible. I mean, you have to really be like spot on aiming with the depth charges, which is Ragnar and Spawn are terrible at this. But anyways, he's going to get overwhelmed by uh, depth charges from ASW, from the battleships and cruisers. But I digress. Well, let me know what you think about Ragnar in today's meta of 2024. Do you think it's a viable ship these days? It's worth the steal. I actually, uh, for me personally, I like it. I still love playing it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, not for maybe competitive because I don't think it can really do that much, uh, have a much effectiveness on it effectiveness on an area in clan battles but again it's still fun to play in randoms and rank maybe and I, I still enjoy it it's pretty strong it's pretty awesome as well so let me know if you have any comments below what you think let me know as always like scroll up and below at uh next four thousand uh benchmark we're gonna do any other premium giveaway as always if you see me out there say hi thanks for making this community a better place and also a great place to learn from it as well you guys stay safe and we'll see you guys next time cheers